That day when we found out, we, I mean, we were just in shock. We had to figure out, okay, well, we have to go to urologist appointments this afternoon. Who's going to watch our kids? Shrek was the first person I called. So he calls me up and he says, I, I don't really know how to tell you this, but my doctor diagnosed me with testicular cancer. He watched our kids while we went and found out how bad it was and if it had spread and all that. Five, four, three, two, one. Me and Daniel just always clicked from day one. We always had a great relationship. From the first time we tried out together, like we just clicked and uh, he become like an older brother to me. So we started hanging out a lot because we were working a lot together. I can look at him and I can know exactly what he's thinking. He is one of the guys that wants to beat the next guy all the time. It don't matter. If we're playing spike ball in the gym, pit stops, he wants to beat the next guy no matter what. I would say um, the beginning of last year, March of 2018, I, I started telling my wife like I was having some symptoms. I wasn't sleeping that good. I wasn't recovering from workouts. And I played it off for a few months because we had just had our third uh, child, Eden and nobody was sleeping good. And um, went in for an ultrasound, and he called me the next day. He said that ultrasound came back, Daniel, and, and it looked uh, pretty concerning. And uh, as soon as my wife saw me, she knew exactly you know, what he had said. We just sat on our, uh, we just sat in our living room and just cried. As hard as it hit him on the chin, it hit me on the chin. Like, when you work with a guy for that long, it was tough. They staged me the highest you can be staged for testicular cancer. Stage one was like 99% that you would be cured. And then stage two was a little worse. And then stage three, you, you know, like those odds aren't as good. You know, I was stage 3C, but I didn't want to lose. And I told the doctors that. I said, look, when I'm in the hospital, I'm still going to work out. I'm not going to be like any other patient you've ever had. At first, I think he was a little bit down. He was like, man, if I don't, you know, hit lug nuts or do some pit stops, I'm going to lose this. So I was like, let's just build a practice up at his house. It was good for me mentally just to escape and do what I love to do. And I would send those guys videos like on Sundays. Like, I'd be like, hey, you guys are working today. I'm not there with you, but I'm, I'm working too. You know, anytime you work with somebody for a long time, especially on this team, we're all family. And you win races together. You win battles together. You cry together. I mean, you become closer than you're than your normal family, to be honest. You know, at Stewart Haas Racing on the four car, we talk a lot about family and community. Uh, and Daniel Smith has been a part of that family from the beginning. So there was never, ever a question that as soon as he was ready to go, it was his spot and he was coming back. It was just like riding a bike, like and putting on an old pair of shoes. Like, you know, you just, you know what's what he's doing. He knows what you're doing. And I'm just back at it, having a good time. As of right now, I'm, I'm cancer free. And before, I used to get really stressed out about pit stops because you always want to do a good job and you want to be the best. Well, now there's way more important things than racing. Um, yes, it is very important to me, but ultimately it's my family. It's um, me being alive, being healthy, and being here. And some good news. I. He had some scans done this past week, and they did come back negative. We thank Daniel Smith, his family, and the four team, certainly for sharing this story with us.